The colder temperatures are blowing in right on time. The wind has just picked up. We are supposed to have our first frost tonight, and I have moved in as much as I possibly can from outdoors. Let me know, would you go to the trouble of moving in your plants to keep them from freezing. Maybe you do this already and just pick all the tomatoes. I couldn't lift all of those or get them moved. These are my ginormous celery plants that have been going for two years and I didn't have the heart to leave them outside as I use them all winter long. So now that Kansas is officially into the colder weather, I'm going to be making some comfort foods. And maybe some people call these poor man comfort foods. Sometimes we call them that around this house. So I'm going to share some recipes with you for colder evenings that you just want to sit somewhere cozy with a blanket or sit in front of the fire and have your supper. I hope you enjoy these recipes. Using up what I have on hand to come up with meals is one of the best ways to combat inflation. Today I'm using some plant cream. I buy this when it's on sale with a coupon. We actually prefer this to regular cream and it lasts longer. I have some minced garlic, some frozen thyme from the garden, some Parmesan cheese that I also buy on sale and then I freeze it until I need it some salt and pepper, and three-fourths of a stick of butter. I've made some gluten-free pasta and rinsed it. You can use regular and put it into two loaf pans. I picked several of the strands of Swiss chard from my garden. I cut up the bottoms that look like celery and froze those so I can put them in soups this winter. And I'm going to use the leafy parts in my Alfredo sauce. I am melting my butter and then we're going to add a little bit of garlic to that and take it off of the burner. We now have our garlic in our butter. I've added some salt and some pepper and we're now going to add about a cup and a half of our cream. I've added some of my fresh thyme. I'm just going to heat this until it warms a bit and then I'm going to put in my cheese and shut off the burner. I've added about six ounces of my Parmesan cheese. I've shut off the burner. I'm just going to stir this in and then we will put it on our pasta. I'm going to cover this and put it in the oven for just a little bit so that that Swiss chard can cook and then we will have dinner. Homemade Alfredo sauce is just that easy. And I buy that cream when it's on sale with a coupon. I also buy the Parmesan cheese when it's on sale with a coupon and throw it in the freezer. So it makes it very affordable. I used skim milk in that recipe that I had also bought on Markdown. And when you look at how small the jars are that you buy in the store and how thick the sauce is, Homemade is different and it tastes so much better. I did add a little bit more garlic salt to that in the end and it made it absolutely perfect. So I hope you enjoy that poor man comfort meal. Now on to the next recipe. I'm making some prepare ahead foods for winter today so that I can just throw things together really easily. I have some baking powder. I have my Bob's Red Mill Gluten 1 to 1 baking flour. You can use all purpose regular flour. I have salt and I have cornmeal. And I'm going to make some make ahead Jiffy cornbread mixes. <laughs> this is all that's in those cornbread mixes that we buy. And then I'm putting on the front what we need to add when we want to throw it together at the last minute. This and other recipes is in my 50 frugal recipes when cooking on a budget and also my 50 more frugal recipes when cooking on a budget cookbooks that are on Amazon and linked in the description below. So I like to use one of these to keep things from getting messy. 
I have already put in four teaspoons of baking powder in each jar, a half of a teaspoon of salt in each jar, and now we need one and a half cups of cornmeal and a half of a cup of flour. That is all that goes in these mixes. And we're paying money to buy them at the store when we can make them ahead easily on our own. Now we have one already easily made. I'm going to mix it up. And we have our cornbread mix when we get ready to make cornbread this winter. As you can see, I like making things at home that are easy, affordable, and don't take a lot of thought. <laughs> I don't want to put a ton of work into things, but I want them to be good. I want them to be tasty. I want them to be easy. I want them to be frugal. And so I do a lot of those types of things around here. Now, if you find these types of recipes helpful, let me know in the comments. I'd be glad to share more of them like that. Now let's share another one today because we haven't done any baking in a while and now that it's turning cooler I'm in the mood for some baking. So let's do an easy baking recipe. For this recipe you're going to need a sprayed loaf pan, some salt, some sugar, some flour of your choice. I'm using gluten-free again, baking soda, and I'm using some buckwheat flour that is also gluten-free, but you could use whole wheat or you could just use all-purpose flour for the whole thing. And this is a cup of light mayonnaise. We bought this stuff by accident, opened it up and said, wow, this is terrible. <laughs> so I'm using it up in this recipe to get that jar out of my fridge. And then I have an old banana and I have two other halves of a banana that I had froze in the freezer. Don't let those bananas go bad. If you see they're going bad and no one eats them, just put them in a freezer baggie and throw them in the freezer and then you can use them for days like today. So for this recipe, we're going to mix together two teaspoons of baking powder, a half of a teaspoon of salt, I'm going to put in two thirds of a cup of my buckwheat flour, one and a third cups of my gluten-free flour. But again, you just need to total two cups. So do what you feel like you want to do there. One cup of bananas and one cup of mayo of your choice. Three fourths of a cup of sugar. And that's all we need to mix up this recipe. So let's get that going. This recipe is in my 50 more frugal recipes cookbook. Now you don't have to buy these cookbooks, but those of you that have, I appreciate that so very much. I make about $1.44 a sale and it does go towards my expenses living an early retired life. So thank you. While we're mixing that up, we're going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees and check out this new stove and make sure that it works good. We have our batter all ready to go. That's the washing machine you hear in the background. And we are going to bake this at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. This smells so good. I hope you enjoy. And since I don't have any small children at home, when I'm done baking and it's 54 degrees in the house like it is today, we had our first night of freezing weather, I just pop that oven open a little ways and let that heat escape. I've already paid for it, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. I always enjoy the time that you spend with me. And in closing, I'm going to share what goes on while I'm trying to work.